Hey guys, welcome back to Prep Talk on Prepping in Progress. I'm Steve, and today we all seem to like playing uh, scenario games in the comments, so guess what we're going to do today? Among other things. So stay with me and find out. Okay guys, so usually we start our prep talks with prayer and today is no different so bow your heads with me merciful father we have two concerns to bring before you today we have miss georgia who is battling cancer you know the full situation um from my understanding, she has had one operation, uh, radiation therapy, and when they went back to make sure that it was gone, they found more. And she's got a long road ahead of her. So we just ask you, for your healing hands, guide the doctors, step in if it be your will, and be with her family. Once again, we also want to bring Brandon before you. His healing has been remarkable, and we ask you to continue to heal him. Look over Michael, over at Asymmetrical Preparedness, and take care of him and his whole family. We lift them up before you, Lord, and ask you to guide and comfort and help them in any way possible that even the ways that we cannot imagine you have said before they call I will answer and while they're yet speaking I will hear and we claim that on Miss Georgia and Brandon's behalf Amen remember if you have a prayer request or a blessing to share please leave it in the comments or email us at preppinginprogress at gmail.com and we'll pray for you and put a message in there if you, in the email if you don't want it brought up or you don't want a name brought up or if you just want us to say you know we have three silent prayer requests today we can do that for you <clears throat> so scenarios First, I'm going to throw one up, and then we're going to get into the meat of our subject. Let's see here. I actually have one I want to look at as well, but we'll, we'll throw that one in at the end. An electromagnetic pulse, CMP, went off, and you have about two weeks worth of food and water in your pantry and $200 cash. You also have a handgun, about 300 rounds of ammo, and four more family members to look after. What would you buy with the $200 before total chaos took over, and why? For those of you already living on your bug out location, on your farm, your setup for the next 10, 15 years, play along, imagine, pretend. The purpose of a scenario is to put yourself in a position that you hope and pray you never will be. So give it some thought. Get ready to put A, scenario A, and put it in the comment section. Scenarios. Some people call it wargaming. So I gotta be careful with the tags. Don't want, you know, the YouTube algorithm to get too hinky. We are thinking of starting a book club on here. What Kim and I'll do is we will put up what book we're going to be reading for a week, maybe two weeks, and if you want to get that book, um, follow along, or not really follow along, but read it during the same period of time, and then throw out your comments and thoughts, and we're going to review it. Right now, um, the book we're going to be working on is 77 Days in September, and I just blanked on the author, I'm sorry. But why? And why fiction?
someone once said in every legend there is a kernel of truth um, if you look at Homer's Odyssey and Iliad Troy was found using his books sometimes it's just a principle um, sometimes it's just a random thought idea concept and sometimes it is a much deeper, deeper truth. One of the books that we're going to get into later is Going Home by a American. Now, the first book in the series, Going Home, a American uh, started out playing mind games with himself as he traveled for work, trying to figure out what he would do if this happened, if that happened, how this happened, and throughout his trips, as he ran these scenarios through his head, the storyline for the book developed. So where I'm going with this is fiction can mirror a possible reality, a possible situation. Another book I truly love is Pulling Through by Dean Ng. Part of the reason why I love this book so much is the story itself is probably only Mm, the first half of the book, if that. Afterwards, it gets into actually how to build the things in the book, how to build a homemade radar, uh, radar radiation detector. Um, they, they call it a the KFM meter, how to make it, how to use it, um, and other things. So we're going to be looking at books like this as well. We'll probably also hit a couple of non-fiction fiction books. I'm a big fan of the godfather of the American readout movement, James Wesley Rawls, and his Tools for Survival and How to Survive the End of the World as We Know It. But scenarios can lead to books, and books can be a way to challenge our minds, to, a way to go okay what would I do if what would I do if there was an infrastructure breakdown because of a terrorist attack what would I do because of why so that's where what we're thinking of doing um, and let's play our next scenario sorry guys this is gonna be a short one today um, So, scenario two, write down in your comment, you know, scenario B, and then your thoughts. The government collapsed, and everyone has been on their own for months. Out of nowhere, six men wearing UN uniforms appear at your door saying that they are with the government and that they need your ammo and supplies, along with everyone else's in order to help reestablish order. You and your family must comply or be counted as anti-government radicals. Would you enlist and donate all you have to the new government and be counted as a patriot? Or would you be labeled as a terrorist and fight them off if you could? So, yeah. Kind of some hard ones today and, and some interesting thought processes. I'm thinking about the EMP one and what would I spend my 200 cash on yeah we're pretty well set for food so I would probably wouldn't do food as much as I would store up fuel stay bill 
and parts, maybe manual tools. Um, these would all be ideas I would have. Probably hit up Atwoods and um, you know various tool stores. The other thing I might consider doing is using that money to, if we were at the in town house, to get out. You know, use it to facilitate our exit if we didn't already have everything lined up, which we're pretty well set. And then once we're out of there, use whatever I have left over to facilitate our long term survival. The government collapsed and the UN guys showed up. Scenario B. <clears throat> My answer is, first of all, I'd like to make sure that they're legitimate. And go from there. I'd like to inspect the uniforms, make sure these aren't stolen uniforms, make sure that the uniforms fit properly, they have the proper identification. Um, and go from there. You know, identifying who works with what is a vital part of something like this. You know, with my um, emergency management ID and my responsibilities, I would be asked to help out. So are these people that I am supposed to be working with, or are these people who are not actually part of the infrastructure. And from there, you, you really have to make your own decisions. All right, guys, those are just some thoughts and you know, we'll probably get into it more in the comment section. So yeah, you all have a great day and we will talk to you soon.